Hello and welcome back to Wheeler Scientific. In this episode of the Scientific Glass Blowing series, I will be going over how to properly bend glass while going over some common mistakes that'll happen and how to correct those so you get the perfect bend every time. Being able to bend glass tubing is crucial to making a wide variety of glass apparatuses. A few examples are sulex extractors, condensers, and distillation heads. All these apparatuses find common use in labs around the world and to being able to make and repair these is a crucial skill that is very important, which all begins with being able to bend tubing. Bending glass is quite straightforward. All you need to begin is take your glass, and you're going to need to melt one end or seal it up somehow. This is because you need to apply pressure to the inside to keep uniform wall thickness and diameter when bending. Once you have that sealed, you can seal it in a few different ways. You need to throw a cork in there or melt the ends shut. I chose to melt the end shut because I don't have any corks that fit this 10mm tubing. The tubing type that I have here is just standard 10mm tubing with a 1mm wall. I'm going to melt one end shut and then let it cool. Once cooled, we can begin. Now, when heating glass, you need to remember that hot glass looks like cold glass. So, after you melt it, make sure that it's cool before going back and touching it. Now when it comes to bending glass, we want to heat the glass to where it wants to bend and not melt. Glass has a softening point and then also a melting point. We want to be in between these ranges to where the glass feels like cooked spaghetti in your hands. It takes a lot of practice to start to recognize when this feeling comes in and when you should bend the tubing compared to when you should wait. It's very crucial to get this temperature range correctly because heating too much will cause the glass to melt and when you go to bend it, you'll get weird kinks in it and it won't look right. But if you heat it too little, it'll just constrict the tubing and your outer diameter won't be the same as it is when it started. Your inner diameter will be all messed up, your wall thickness will be messed up, and it won't even look good. Now that we have the tube all ready, we can begin heating it. Now we want to heat around three times the diameter of the tubing. So in this case, because it's standard 10 millimeter tubing, we want to heat 30 millimeters in length. If you can't visualize this, a great way to see it is to put some markings on it. A piece of tooling that you could use for this is what's known as a welder's pen. This welder's pen is great for high temperatures. It won't get washed off by the heat and then you can wipe it right off once you're done. Make those markings and then go back to your heating. But make sure you only do it while it's cool, of course. As we heat, we don't want to heat really close to the flame's candles. These candles are going to be the hottest part of the flame. We want to heat farther away so we can evenly heat it and heat it slowly so we can control the temperature more accurately. We want to make sure that we spin it consistently and move it back and forth evenly. Now you want to move past the point that you made the markings on so that you heat the whole section. That's just the section that needs to be hot. But if you don't heat past that and you just heat in between those lines, then you won't heat it up enough and you'll get weird kinks and it won't look bright. Once you have enough heat in there, then you're going to take it away out of the flame and bend it. And while you're bending it, you want to blow into the blow hose assembly to apply pressure inside. If you don't do this, it will kink and mess up your bend. And there you have it. Your tube's done. And it's a quite quick and simple process. Bending glass can look straightforward, but that can be a bit misleading. It'll take a lot of practice before you can develop that tactile sense of knowing when to bend it, how far to heat it, and how much air to apply to the tube while bending it. But after some practice, you'll get it down quite quickly. Play around with how you do it and see what method works best for you. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, post those in the comments section below. If you did like the video, drop a like, and if you want to see more of my content, consider subscribing. If you'd like to join a community of like-minded individuals to discuss scientific topics, the link to my Discord server is in the link in the description. And I hope to see you again. I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a jeep, I got that bug, and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium.